Okay, so let us not talk about functions. Okay, so we will come back to those sets later uh, again. Uh, functions. So what are functions? Now, uh, function is basically the foundation of your rule set. Okay, because if you look at risk, when you when you look at risk analysis, access risks. This is basically your co combination of functions, right? Conflicting functions. That that's what makes up a risk. And uh, if you open up uh, one of the risk IDs. And the risks are then tied to rule sets. Okay, this is tied to a global rule set. But where are the actual conflicts defined? Uh, the composition of the function defined, uh, the conflicts defined, it's in the functions. Right? So that is why the function is a foundation of your rule sets. So what are functions basically like we you know we saw a function is a functions are basically a grouping of one or more related uh, actions and permissions for a specific business activity. So if I click on this and say open, it is basically what it is a grouping of transaction codes, which is actions in GRC terminology and permissions okay click right so transaction codes and then permissions which are your authorizations okay so what is it made up of so let's take a look at the screen here okay so the trans the function is made up of the action which is your transaction codes. Then it is also made up of uh, permissions. And uh, if you observe, then you have uh, uh, with the permissions, you have a condition called AND and OR, okay? Or not. So we'll come to this in a bit. So this is also important, very critical, how you set this up, okay? So again, the function is made up of uh, actions, transaction codes, permissions, which are your authorizations, which is which are coming from SU24 set up in your backend from your backend system, and then. Remember, we also configured business processes and sub processes. So business process. And then you can also say well, the analysis scope of the risks, revenue run the risk. Or what is the analysis scope for this particular function? Okay, whether it can be analyzed for a single system or it can be analyzed cross system. Okay, so cross system, if you want to, you know, set this up a function for a cross system, uh, it's a, you, you must use at least one function when the SOD uh, risk is evaluated across different systems. Okay. Now, let us close this. Okay, let's open it again, okay, because we need to talk about uh, what this, and an or or, okay, let's open this up. Okay, so in actions, it's a pretty straightforward thing, right, it's a, uh, what do you call, a transaction code okay but permissions is the key here okay because permissions bring in your authorizations from SU24 okay so when you run the the sync job 
right in a suit in back in, when you run the asynchronization sync job which is authorization sync it brings in this job would bring in whatever changes have happened in su24 uh, in the backend system okay so that is what you see here those are the changes that you see here okay now this permission settings what you should be doing is it should be you should be focusing on defining them these permissions at the minimum level of authorization so you don't want to go too granular and you know set this up okay so you define the permissions at a minimum level of authorizations to which you know that are required to uh, to execute that transaction codes okay in the context of the rule set function okay so this is the that what level you set this up is very important now what is the logic that you know works you know for making this permission work on which this permission works or this function works right or the risks work okay the logic between uh objects right the, between the permission objects for a specific action for a transaction code is always I, you know it will it's not, not, not an always but depending on your scenario could be an and or an or okay it's okay it's always and or an or but majority of the times the permission level would be an on and okay but when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to the risks okay in a function this is always an and okay uh, the condition for a for the transaction uh, authorizations is always an and but it when when it comes to uh, risks right then the permissions can be or also okay not necessarily it will be an and in, in that case okay but in a function at a transaction code level action level the permissions are always an and okay so let's we'll, we'll talk about it in, um, more okay we we'll try to understand it little better okay so keep in mind that this condition in a function for any transaction code or any action the permissions between the objects right the condition between the objects and the authorization values is always an and condition within the function okay let's keep that in mind now that is the one thing that is very important for you to understand how the risk analysis is going to work so based on this logic the way you set this up right uh, the permission with the conditions and then the risks with the conditions that is going to impact your risk analysis reports okay so and also right it is not uh, possible uh, to to change the logic between permission objects and permission fields okay objects and fields it's not possible to uh, what do you call the logic between them okay now how do uh, permission the settings work right and or or not so we have three and or or not right okay so and and or or not condition setting is available within a single uh, object field okay so in case of an and each field is required okay that is what it means in case of an or okay 
you can use this for the same object, right? You cannot have an and and or, okay? It always has to be, if you use a condition, it all, for an object, for all the fields and the field values, it, it has to be an and. For the next object, it could be an and, it could be an or, okay? So, so the, for the times, for the or, in the condition, the logic is, any one of the field values okay is required okay so you can have an or at in this year you know at an object level or at a field level but it has to be within the same object okay so and the third one is not any field value Okay, if you, when you say a NOR, what it means is any field value except these two. Okay, in this case, but if you have a multiple NORs, then, then it becomes more confusing. Okay, so as much as possible, you know, when you set your permissions and uh, uh, conditions here, you try to make it, keep it as and as much as possible. Okay. In exceptional cases, you could put an OR, okay, uh, for a field value, for example, but not, not at an object level. But if there is a condition where, you know, if you, you know, scenario, business requirement where uh, you, if you, you can use, an, you know, any object, then you could use OR, but that's not uh, recommended. All right, so let's close this. All right, so now let us go. Now that we have understood what this function is and what makes up a function, let us now create one, a few functions of ours, okay? A custom function. So what we are going to do now is we have uh, about eight standard function IDs, okay? So what we will do is we'll make a copy of these functions, okay? And then create a, you know, a risk IDs. These are the risk IDs that we have taken. And this risk IDs, standard risk IDs have these functions with them, within them, okay? So what we'll do is, We'll create these four functions, okay? These, these, these basically eight, eight functions. We'll make a copy of them, okay? And then we'll also create four risk IDs, this, this many risk IDs that we have. And then we'll add it to our uh, custom uh, rule set that we created, the ACE rules, okay? So let's go and take uh, this, the first one. So you go to ARA, uh, the uh, no, NWBC, let's start from the beginning. Okay, so what you do is, you create common functions. Now, you have the option of creating the functions from scratch, okay? So you just go click on create, and then you specify the function ID, what you want to give, uh, name, then the business process that the function ID would belong to, the analysis scope, and then you add the systems, the transaction codes that you want the function to have, and then you maintain the permissions. Okay, you could do that. But I'm going to use the copy mechanism, and then, so the first one that we need is BS11. Okay, so let's go and select BS11 and say copy. So we'll create uh, those eight functions. Okay, so let's let's name it Z SP. Okay. So just for, so that it's, I can identify this easily, okay? 
uh, I will keep this as is. Uh, I can add my connector if I want. For every transaction code, I can go and add a connector. So if you want to add a system, basically, uh, which is a connector, you click on add. Okay. And then you'll have to, for every connector, you need to set this up again. Okay, so let's do that. Mm. Or we can just simply leave this, okay? So we can try this when we want to set, we'll, we'll, we'll come to this again. So let's save this, okay, as is, okay? Okay, the data is saved. Now similarly, let us go and copy the remaining ones, okay? We'll, we'll create one custom kind of few functions, okay? Uh, after this, but let's copy this, what we have. So you have, uh, what was the other one? BS02, this one, take a copy. Okay, so let's put ZSP. Okay, I'm going to save it. Okay, so now close it. Now if you scroll down, you should be seeing those, okay, BS11, BS2, right, we have those. Now if we go, let's check the third one that we have, BS12. So go back, Okay, what we could do is we can then let's try with this okay bs12 so you can either create a new function like i said and add your systems uh, or your connectors that you have created or what we'll do in this case is so zsp right okay so let's go and uh, you can change to if you want so your system, right? This is my SAP HANA system. So you can basically filter, okay? And uh, this one right and in this case I, you can always go and change to your uh, system okay this is my Svarhana system which is then again taking you back to the connector that I created okay so let's go and save this close this Let's go and do BS04.
let's close this now let's take the next one okay gl02 okay so gl02 right now let's go and check whether this have been created or not okay now gl02 like we saw you know we created uh, we need to generate the rest so we need to generate the functions also you can generate it from here also okay so let's go to gl02 now quickly what the if you see this right if you see f512 or you know gl02 with gl02 underscore fap these are anything that has an extension fap that's a fury app okay so let's open copy this let's see sp i'm going to save okay and close i'm going to pause now and then create how many do we have three more let me create those three more okay so we have created now the rule sets that we we had identified okay so the functions that we had identified as our sample data okay this anything that says start with some zsp is ours that we created all right so let's go and create a custom one okay so let's create a custom one called Z Z S P B S nine zero. Okay. Let's assume this is a basis administration business process. Then we are going to do it a single system and we are saying this is a z zsp zbs90 so let's, let's say user administration okay now click on add to add a new uh, entry let's pick our system okay so we are doing this for s4 hana our s4 hana systems okay action we can go and enter let's say i want to enter su01 because we, we are creating it for right let's say again i would say su10 okay and then i will say su12 so all the trans you know actions transaction codes that are common that are that have similar functionality or that are used for similar kind of activity you club them into one function okay all the similar ones now the moment you do this right you get the description also and now when you go to permissions you will see all the objects that come from su24 from the backend system now this is this is user administration and by default the objects the authorizations the permissions they come as inactive now depending on your requirement okay you can go and activate the authorizations that you want to i know need for uh, your uh, risk analysis so for user administration let's say creation uh, i would say let's say this is creation user creation or let's say user administration it could be um, creation or modification or whatever right the key object that you have is 
the yes you have yes, you send us for user and grp right now for that now you go and select the authorization values that you want to activate so just say active uh, i want to i don't need uh, 03 which is display i can say lock unblock right then i would say delete and this is with uh, role assignment okay whatever so i do that do i need any other uh, maybe i need for pro i would say uh, display and uh, assign okay for prof profiles and then where is for agr agr should be here so for agr also i will say uh, for roles i would say active and active so once you have defined your authorizations permissions like oh, and you know just say just say save now here in okay all right so click on save close so we created bs90 which is for user administration okay now let's go and create another one let's say you know the use in some case some places you would say the uh, user administration and older administration should not be together you know it should be given to one person so you would say that is a conflict right so let's go and create another one so just say 91 okay let's say zsp bs 91 which is role administration okay now you can you select the business process okay and then single system or cross system depending on what your requirement is then click on add let us do the same thing okay now you will can repeat these steps for multiple systems if you have the same okay so i have a tip i'm picking s4 but i also have connected to uh, my ecc system so i can pick my ecc uh, system also okay now let's go and in this case let's put um, pfcg okay if there is because this is an s4 hana system you have other values also other new transaction codes that have come in so let us go and add a couple of more transaction codes okay all right it's the same process okay it brings in the transaction codes and they're always active right because that you that is what you wanted you're adding and then from sv24 uh, from the backend system it pulls in uh, the authorization values in permissions okay so let's go and look the main object in this case is yes and this could use the underscore agr so we just activate this one in this case okay let's do that so make everything active that you want to be checked in risk analysis i want to say is deleting i don't want change documents display change document but i will say 21 22 okay so basically you activate the values that you want to be checked in risk analysis okay if the rest if you don't think are important that's fine so you just don't have to activate them okay now click on save okay now this is how you create a function okay 
Now we saw two methods. One for one while copying, we copied a function, existing function, and then you also created a another function. Okay. Now, if you see, every time you do, you make a change to the functions or the risk, risk IDs, you go and Uh, generate the rules okay we will see how this is done two many seconds in the background let's do it in the background okay so you will have to give you know a name And just say immediately. Okay, so this needs to be done with a risk. Okay, we don't have a risk yet for these. Okay, okay, so let's go and see how to create a risk law. So we created functions. Now let us go. We'll do the same thing. Okay, we, we made a copy of our existing risks uh, that we had. Okay, and we will make a copy and create a new risk. For the ones that we created uh, for the function that we created all right so let's close this window and uh, next what we do is we'll create a risk 